Hello and welcome to Exchange for Media live from Cannes. I have with me today Luis Philip Barros. He's the global CMO at Channel Factory. Luis, welcome to E4M. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, Luis, just before we started, you said that uh, Channel Factory has uh, cracked the code for efficiency for brands and advertisers. Can you just tell us a little more about that? Uh, of course. Oh, the first thing is um, we our technology enables us to focus a lot of, on media efficiency and drive business growth, and by the same time protect your brand and brand reputation. But we do that in a way that we don't compromise on either. It's not that we balance and we have an average result on both. We can deliver optimal business growth instead of the average brand reputation together. Uh, whenever we talk about tech, there's also a concern about regulatory, uh, government regulations. So what can you tell us about that? Because is that safe on that front or are you future, how are you future proofing against any government regulations? That's my favorite question to answer. Uh, audience targeting is something that grew a lot, especially uh, when digital platforms started to grow and it's super important. But at the same time, you need to deal with first party data, second and third party data from other players. And there are a lot of risks with, uh, with regulation and, and technology, that, how technology is evolving. All our data is cookie-less and PII-less. We, uh, we have partnership with all the social media platforms, thanks to that we can analyze and categorize their videos through their private APIs as a partner. And thanks to that, we, uh, we, we can create uh, custom segmentations that are contextual. So I don't need cookies, I don't need uh, PII. Um, uh, all my segmentation is based on the content that people are watching. So I'm already future-proof to any regulations um, that that are focusing on, on private uh, personal data from consumers and, all, and, of course, on technology as well because I'm connected direct, directly to the platforms. So any changes on uh, uh, browsers, cookies, uh, uh, permission, doesn't impact what we do. Uh, Luis, uh, uh, just... Uh Taking this further, how does Channel Factory's tech add value to advertisers? What would you say to advertisers why they should be on the Channel, fact, uh, Channel Factory's platform? Uh, uh, there are two folds on that answer. The first one is related to our data. Our data is exclusive. Uh, we have the access to those platforms and we create the categorizations that are very granular. So we can create any type of segmentation that are not available on the shelf on any of those platforms. Uh, YouTube, for example, is a great platform, it's evolving a lot, but at the same time, it's made for everyone. If you are an advertiser that spends $1,000 a year or $100 million a year, you have the same access to segmentation. Our segmentation allows you to create tailor-made and custom-made segmentations that fulfill your own needs and also allows us to eliminate all the waste or impressions that are not suitable for your brand, right? If you're an alcohol brand, you don't want to be supporting a uh, people uh, drinking under influence or binge drinking or doing anything that is harmful for them related to alcohol. So we can eliminate all those type of impressions. On the second hand, we have a social, uh, social media uh, AI based media platform that is cross channel. So we can optimize your budget in real time using AI across multiple platforms and can test ads and segmentations and average 10,000 tests a day with the same effort that you would do 10 or 15 if you run on the native solutions. Again, not that they are not great solutions, they are, but they are made for everyone. If you have specific needs, and most of the big advertisers have very specific needs and guidelines and objectives that they want to achieve, right? If you are from the same category, you're gonna be competing with your competitor directly for the same segmentations that are available on the shelf. Working with us, you can create anything that is custom made for your agency and your clients. So that's about leveraging uh, AI, you know, in your contextual uh, marketing. But uh, off uh, Channel uh, Factory has actually expanded rapidly into Asia, into the APAC region. So uh, how do you kind of, uh, you know, uh, how do you, how are you approaching these markets, and how are you kind of making yourselves, uh, you know? Uh, sorry, how are you kind of, uh, you know, for the local markets, local nuances, how are you approaching that? No, that's a perfect question. Uh, our technology analyzes 49 different languages. So it's not only categorizing the video, but it's also understanding the context of the culture of the local markets. And for example, India. India is a continent, more than 1.5 billion people. There are different culture, cultures, different languages. So the combination of using different uh, uh, cultural relevance in context to categorize that content, but at the same time, having local specialists that understand the market and understand the industry and have the local relations and connections 
to make it relevant to each of the brands and each of the agencies, regardless of what is the need, that's critical for us. We, we have, of course, global technology. We have a very scalable platform, but we believe that business happens on a local level when we need to cover uh, from language to, uh, to contextual, uh, contextually relevant business there. Uh, I just want to take you a little bit further on this question. A, like you mentioned, India is very diverse, and even the APAC region is very diverse with multicultural uh, lang multicultural region, multiple languages, and you mentioned, you know, we are capturing the nuances. But what are the challenges when you're doing this? Because nuances, like in a country like India, will differ state to state, and the language also changes when you move from state to state. That's why we do that in a very granular way. Every new language, every new market that we enter, we customize the approach, we bring local experts to help us to understand how to do that segmentation, how to do that categorization, and how to leverage our technology in the most appropriate way for each region, state, and even categories. Uh, now, I also want to address the issue of brand safety. If you could just guide us on that, how do you address that? So I think uh, brand safety is our bread and butter, was how we started and one of the things that we're most passionate about. Uh, and this brand safety means different things for different clients, right? As I was mentioning, if you are an alcohol company, you don't want your content on anything that is considered responsible consumption of alcohol. If you are a car maker, you don't want anything related to car accidents or responsible driving. Okay. So we make sure that, if, uh, of course, uh, there's a big initiative from the World Federation of Advertisers, GARM, the Global Alliance for Responsible Media, that have standard guidelines, and we have all those standard guideline, guidelines already pre-set up on our platform, but we can augment those with the needs for clients. So we get the briefing from the client on what is unsafe and unsuitable for them, and based on that, we eliminate all the impressions from channels and, and creators uh, on social media, especially on YouTube, right, where you can have very high-quality premium content from broadcasters or user-generated content from whoever wants to do it. So we, we have this ability of, within any segmentation you run, within any expectation you have, we can accurately remove all the unsafe impressions for your brand. Uh, I'd also like to know any upcoming products or, uh, or technology that you are now developing and it could soon be out in the market and how advertisers can leverage that. So there are a few things I can say already, a few things I can't. But, uh, but we have uh, one of the big uh, evolutions that we did recently is we used to be very uh, specialized on YouTube and we still uh, work a state of the art there. But with our AI-based media platform now, we can work in any social platform and especially we can do an optimization across those platforms. So this is very critical because usually advertisers, they say, I'm going to put X amount on YouTube, Y amount on Meta and this here. But the ability to optimize towards your outcomes, towards your business goals across those platforms is very complex, it's very heavy lifting because you are working within each of those platforms. We are a layer on top and we can allocate 24-7. You would need dozens of people doing that per campaign if you wanted to do that 24-7. We can do that automatically leveraging our AI solution. And our reporting model is very, very granular. So we can report for, for, uh, to you not, not only by the audience or the context that you are buying, but you can go channel by channel, understanding how the performance is happening on each channel and optimize that based on your outcomes. Uh, so we bring a lot, a lot more efficiency and higher ROI to your business. You mentioned premiumization. Can you just elaborate on that? Yes, of course. I'll give one example. A lot of advertisers still rely a lot on TV, even though it's much more expensive because they want to be... Uh, placing their ads to, against premium content, right? I don't want user generated or my brand is a premium brand. If you're in the luxury market, yes, you're not going to want to put your brand on a random YouTube channel uh, that is talking about things that are not related to your category. We have the ability to focus only on high level premium content from creators or from publishers, if you want, on YouTube. You can create specific cohorts and specific segments within premium. So one example, for a beauty brand, and you want to be uh, only on high, uh, uh, high um, quality uh, tutorials from celebrities, we can run this type of segmentation. If you want to be only on high premium content uh, that are recorded on 30 frames per second because the quality of the image is much better, 
you can also do that. If you want to be only on content uh, that people are you uh, creating on the travel abroad to high-end places, we can do that as well. As I said, we can create any type of segmentation that is not available on the shelf to address any specific needs and business outcomes that our clients want. Is this based on keywords or how do you, you know, go through the audio? So we use multiple uh, ways to do that. We do, we analyze the description of the videos, the title of the visions, the videos. We do the audio, uh, audio transcript of each video. We have image recognition. Uh, we have frame by frame. So we mix and match different solutions to make sure that we have the most accurate understanding uh, and reading about the video. Because sometimes only the audio transcript is not enough because you have the tone of voice. Because right. you have the quality of the image, so you need those things. Sometimes those things are great, but the person's talking on a much more ironic uh, 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 manner. So we, we capture all those nuances combining different types of technology, from AI LLM to neural language processing to image recognition to audio transcript uh, through metadata. And that thanks to the partnership that we have on the YouTube measurement program, for example. It's a very exclusive partnership that allows us to analyze 100% of all videos that are monetized on the platform. Finally, what are the trends that we can expect in the contextual advertising space? What should we look out for? So I think we're, we are now on, a, on the verge of a rebirth of contextual advertising, right? Contextual advertising is very uh, efficient and effective, right? If you want to put the right content, the right creative in front of, of a consumer, it's not only knowing who the consumer is, it's knowing what they are doing, to do that in the right context. So uh, the, this rebirth of contextual advertising, mainly in the, in the light of the regu uh, regulations uh, evolution and the new tech uh, implementation that are happening, for example, the deprecation of third party cooks, this is critical. Of course, another one that is impossible not to say is AI. Uh, luckily, we've been working with AI for a long, long time. Is the nature of our business, is AI and machine learning, no, not, not only to categorize the videos, but mainly to optimize our campaigns. Now, with all the revolution that is happening with the large language models, ChatGPT, Gemini, Copilot, and everybody that is coming into that space, we can make it much more intuitive to our clients and our teams to, make a, to, to deliver a much better job. But I believe that now the merge of media, creative, and production, production is going to be much more preeminent on the market because in the past, when you wanted to optimize a creative, uh, of course you could, but was kind of limited because you needed to have the assets pre-done. Now in milliseconds, you can create assets depending on the signals that you have back from the campaign. And that's one of the things that I heard the most here in Khan, right? How uh, AI is going to augment creativity instead of re replace it. You still need big ideas. You, knew, you still need the boldness and the uh, outstanding creative work that, that creative agents can do. You still need the high quality production, but Whenever you talk about customizing that to different contexts and audiences, then AI can do it much faster and better. So I think those two things uh, within the media world are the most relevant ones. And there are other ones very important as well. Brand safety and suitability uh, is not becoming something only for certain categories. Now it's widespread. Um, finding multicultural audiences is more and more relevant as um, decarbonization, making sure that your campaign has the lowest carbon footprint uh, possible, or even that you are offsetting carbon footprint. So those are the trends that, are, that we are seeing, and we have solutions for all of them. It was an interesting choice of words, rebirth. That's interesting. Thank you so much, Luis, for your time. It was a pleasure talking to you. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much for the opportunity.